Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. We have an indefinite integral of the square root of 1 plus x squared over x dx. So if you want to give this integral a try on your own, I'll give you a hint. You need to use trig sub, not u sub. And then I'll work through the solution with you right now. So why do I say we need to do trig sub, not u sub? Well, notice my x to the first is in the denominator. I just want to show you a different scenario where u sub would have worked <laughs> if things were flipped. If you had x over rad 1 plus x squared dx, u sub would have been okay because you could let u equal 1 plus x squared and then du would be 2x dx, which I see right up here. Yes? And then 1 half du is x dx. So that's perfect. Now the problem here is the x is in the bottom. So I don't have x dx. I have 1 over x dx. But pay close attention to things like that. Because a lot of the time students will ask me, how do you know which integration technique to try? And it's because mentally I kind of start going through all the options that we have eliminating them and in the beginning when you're first learning you're gonna have to actually sit there and write it out and see that it doesn't work and then later on you'll get to a point where you can just kind of look at it and run through a few of the first steps and know oh that's not the right choice and usually in my head the order is u sub first right before I do anything fancier than that so just so you know there was a mental check and it didn't work out <laughs> so we've decided it's time for trig sub how do I know which trig sub to use? There's only three options. And then you look here underneath the radical, since I have a constant plus the variable squared, it's time for, that's right, tangent. So I'm gonna let x equal a tangent theta. a squared is always the constant. So a is just one in this case. So that's nice for us. And then we differentiate both sides. So dx is going to be secant squared theta d theta. And then now my job is to rewrite this integral all in terms of thetas. So here we go. I have integral in the numerator square root 1 plus tan squared theta over, I just have tan theta now on the bottom, that's x. And then dx is secant squared theta d theta. Beautiful. Now the whole point of doing trig sub is so that you can use your Pythagorean identities and help you simplify the integrand. So 1 plus tan squared theta, that's equal to secant squared theta. So in the numerator right now, I have square root of secant squared theta. No, that doesn't just give us secant theta. Remember, that gives us the absolute value of secant theta. But when we set up trig sub, we restrict theta so that we don't have to worry about whether or not secant is going to be negative. We can just assume it's positive based on our angle restriction. So I'm not going to write all of that, but just so you know, that's going on behind the scenes. Okay, don't think we're being sloppy all of a sudden. Okay, so in the numerator, I'm just going to put secant theta. And then we still have this over tan theta. And then here's secant squared theta d theta. And then now you kind of need to think, all right, how am I going to proceed from here? Are there some identities or other things I can do to play around with these secants and tangents? Again, my mind goes, can I do a u sub? Mm, no. <laughs> so here's the two options. If I let u be tangent theta du would be secant squared theta d theta, which looks good, but then ugh, here's this extra secant theta, dang it. And then if you tried the other way around, if u was secant theta, du would be secant theta times tan theta, that's no good because my tangent's in the denominator. So both those options don't work. So then I'm like, oh, okay, I'm a little stuck, but how about instead of Leaving this as secant squared theta, I rewrite it as 1 plus tan squared theta using my Pythagorean identity. Maybe I just need to play around with this a little bit more. So I'm going to leave this secant theta over tan theta alone just for a second. And then I'm going to rewrite secant squared theta as 1 plus tan squared theta d theta. All right. And then let's go ahead and distribute. 
So this is a common technique, like when you feel like you've kind of hit a wall and you have a squared trig function, rewrite it using a Pythagorean identity and see if after you distribute that doesn't kind of get the ball rolling again, okay? So we have now secant theta over tan theta plus, and then, ooh, this is cool because look, one of these tangents cancels with the tan squared, right? So then the second term is secant theta tan theta. Now, hopefully you're excited, right? Because you learned all your derivatives in Calc 1, and you know the derivative of secant theta is secant theta tan theta. So, boom, I know the antiderivative of this already. What about this funky first term? Well, let's rewrite it in terms of sines and cosines because I'm not feeling good about it the way it is right now. Secant theta is 1 over cosine theta times... If I have tan theta in the denominator, that's the same as cotangent theta. So that's cosine theta over sine theta. Oh, okay, okay. Still have all this stuff. Don't stop writing the whole problem, okay? That's when you're, you're gonna derail yourself at some point. Cosine theta cancels. Now what do I have? Integral, one over sine theta. That's cosecant theta plus secant theta, tan theta, d theta. Do you know the antiderivative of cosecant theta? You should. <laughs> um, it's very similar to the antiderivative of secant theta. So you have ln, absolute value, okay? I just remember that anything that starts with a co, cosine, cotangent, cosecant, usually involves minuses in its derivatives or antiderivatives. So this is natural log cosecant theta minus cotangent theta. Plus, didn't we say we knew antiderivative of this term? Yep, it's just secant theta. And then don't forget to put plus C. So remember, integral sine and d theta go away at the, the instant that you anti-differentiate, and then that's when the plus C needs to come about, all right? Now, don't box this answer. We're not done. Remember, everything started in terms of x, but we have an answer in terms of theta. So how do we get back there? Well, what was the substitution that we used? We had let x equal tangent theta. That's the same as saying x over 1 is tangent theta. Why do I want you to think about it that way? Because it's triangle time. So you're going to draw a right triangle, put theta somewhere, and the ratio of opposite over adjacent right? Tangent theta opposite over adjacent is going to be x over 1. And then using the Pythagorean theorem, I know the hypotenuse is going to be around 1 plus x squared. Great. So now we can go back to x. I have ln, absolute value. Cosecant theta is reciprocal of sine theta. So instead of opposite over hypotenuse, it's going to be hypotenuse over opposite. Hypotenuse over opposite. Minus, who's next? Who's next? Cotangent theta. Cotangent theta is reciprocal of tan theta. So it's going to be adjacent over opposite. 1 over x. Whoop. Plus secant theta, reciprocal of cosine theta, that's going to be hypotenuse over adjacent, rad, 1 plus x squared, over 1. You don't have to put the over 1. I'll ditch it in a second, okay? Sometimes there's some simplification that can be done. I notice these two terms have the same denominator, so let's just combine them. I'll put everything over x, and then you have rad, 1 plus x squared minus 1. Oh, it's going to bother me if it's not perfect. You guys, I'm sorry, but it will irk me. Okay, there we go. Plus rad 1 plus x squared plus c. That's it. How was that for you? Trig sub is difficult for a lot of students. So if you're struggling, don't feel badly. You're not alone. I think the hard thing is 
knowing which trig identities to use, having them all memorized and ready. And I've said it a bunch of times. I, I tell my students all the time, as long as you just know sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one, you can derive the other two Pythagorean identities. How? I'll show you really quickly. So I divide everybody by cosine squared theta. And you can write it out or, I mean, when you do it enough, you could probably imagine it in your head. This becomes tan squared theta plus one is secant squared theta. And then similarly, if you divide everybody through by sine squared theta, you get the other Pythagorean identity. If you know those, your double angles, and then the half angles that we use for integration, that's the most important, okay? Um, and if you need help with trig sub or anything else, I have so many video lectures on my YouTube channel. Just go to the playlists. They'll be under Calc 2 video lectures, and then you can go through the rest of this playlist, Integral of the Day. I've done a ton that required trig sub, okay? So I'm here to help you. Subscribe if you're not already. Give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. And you can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math TV with Professor B. I'm also on Twitter. Who knows why? Okay. Anyways, I love you all. Be back soon. Bye.